Hi, welcome to Inside Church. We're so glad that you are able to join us. We trust that as you watch the message that your heart will be stirred and that faith will be built. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you ready for the word this morning? I want to speak on something that's been in my heart for a little while. And I just want to bring it out now. And I want to give it a title. And the title is Pursue Unity at All Costs. Pursue Unity at All Costs. You will be absolutely amazed how many times we petition God and He can't do anything because we're in disunity. Come on. If you can't say, oh me, say, ouch. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Word. Father, help me as I share this Word this morning because truth sets us free. And the more you reveal to us from the Word, the more we are able to walk in overcoming power. And so thank you, Spirit of God. You're the great teacher. And you will quicken this Word from the pages, this holy Bible, from its pages. You will quicken it causing revelation to come to our hearts in this all-important subject of walking in unity one with another. And so we give you glory, honor, and praise. Thank you, Father, that as your word comes, our faith will increase and we will align our faith with the word which we read. Hallelujah. Relationships will cost you. Matthew 12, verse 22 to 30. She has an amazing testimony. If you ever get around to ask her her testimony, how she came to live in Durban, the most amazing testimony. <clears throat> Matthew 12, verse 22 to 30 reads, Then one was brought to him who was demon-possessed, Blind and mute. I mean, this person really had a problem. Demon-possessed, blind, and mute. And Jesus healed him. What the Bible says. And Jesus healed him. So that the blind and the mute man both spoke and saw. And all the multitudes were amazed and said, could this be the son of David? Now when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow does not cast down demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. Matthew 12, 30, 25. But Jesus knew their thoughts. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house, family, every family divided against itself will not stand. And if I cast down demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they should be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder his house. He who is not with me is against me. He who does not gather with me scatters. A very weighty scripture indeed. The moment the devil sees the power of God in somebody's life, he tries to bring division. 
Notice, once the act of delivering somebody had become manifest, the Pharisees started to speak against Jesus. The moment you do and step out in faith and do something for the kingdom, somebody will speak against you. It's just the reality of being a believer. Jesus said, if they hate me, they'll hate you. Don't chase the hate. Chase Jesus. Amen. Come on. It's very important that we understand this. See, we can have prophetic words till the cows come home. But the Lord can't respond to us if we walk in division. So we'll have a measure, but never the full measure. So, the easiest way to understand unity is not walk around kissing everybody and hugging them and say, bless you, brother. Unity can only come in Christ. He becomes the focal point for unity, and I'm going to try and unpack this this morning. But what you need to recognize is there, people have many interpretations about what unity looks like. And I hope to be able to unpack some of that. But the godly, godly unity is one-mindedness. So if you're not in one-mindedness in line with the word, I'm not, don't be taken by what people say. That's why the Lord took us to this scripture. And there are many others. The unity is in Christ. As believers, if we don't have a common belief, an objective to serve Jesus, there will be disunity. You see, what will happen is, should you clap your hands or shouldn't you? Should you wear a tie or shouldn't you? Should you come to shorts? It was shorts, I nearly said, should you come to shorts in trousers? But should you come to church in shorts? If anybody wearing shorts, I'm not on them. Just check. Oh, there's the shorts. Okay? Do you understand? Those are external conduct matters. The heart is the place of like-mindedness, of oneness with the Lord, of agreement with God. So over the years, people have said to me, well, I don't believe the Bible. And then, now this is interesting because Paul says, and just because of time, I can't go to the scripture now, but Paul says, don't dispute with people. Don't sit and argue trying to convince people about the truth of God's word. Give God's word and move on. Let the word do the work. You see, we get into all kinds. That's why there's so much division in the body of Christ. Well, we don't agree with your preacher always on the faith message. Well, the only way you please God is by faith. If you don't want faith, that's fine. I'm going to do faith. See, so what I've said to people over the years, a man came to the church, some of you may remember this when we first planted, and he came right up to me afterwards and he says, I just want you to know, I don't believe in healing, but I'm coming to this church. I said, well, I want you to know you weren't lost in this church because I'm not going to stop speaking about the healing power of Jesus. So before you become offended, if you don't want to change, why don't you go where they don't believe that? Are you with me? There's no argument if you would use the word of God as the foundation of your faith. There are many doctrines of demons. There are doctrines of men. The Bible speaks of it extensively. So therefore, when the spirit of truth comes and he directs us to the word of God, that becomes the yea and amen of our conversation as believers. Does Jesus heal? Yes. Well, why am I not healed? That's your business with Jesus. But he heals. Are you with me? Come on, family. Come on. Come on. 
And so we can go on and on and on through those things. So like-mindedness, you can't walk in like-mindedness if you don't allow the source of change, which is God's Word, Romans 12, 2, to transform you. So if you want unity, this becomes the focal point of unity. The more you spend time in the Word, the less you'll argue with people. See, we live in a society, especially now through social media, that is so self-opinionated. I mean, they've never left their bedroom, but they know everything about the moonshot. They know everything about health. They know the whole political realm across the entire world, every country, culture. They know it. Don't be so gullible and let that stuff get on you because it causes dispute. I've known of pastors that get into arguments on Facebook to get their points across. Thank God. Later they told me they stopped it. I said, well, you were on a hiding second to none. All that will do is tire you out because they won't believe you. They've got a point to prove. There's a whole lot of unbelief in there. There's a whole lot of pride in there. And so you can go on. So unity has to be in Christ. That's where it begins, and that's where it stops. Amen. All right? So Christ is the living word made flesh. Why do I say that? Because even in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, there are those that are saying that so-called serve God that say he was not born of a virgin. Where did you find that doctrine? Now, if we think that's not important, that is crucial to our faith. Because he was born of the Spirit of God, there was no, no involvement of man, male. It was a perfect seed from heaven. And we don't have time to unpack all that today, but it's so critical because he came into the earth absolutely sinless and stayed sinless until he left. So that is a crucial cornerstone of everything we believe having become justified through Christ Jesus. Amen. Which entitles us to resurrection in Christ. And you know when he went to Martha to raise up Lazarus, the dispute came, yes, I believe. And they spoke about the, she didn't fully understand resurrection. She was coming from a religious point of view. Didn't dispute it entirely, but had it a bit wrong in the way she was doing it. So, when we pursue unity in a worldly context, we have to compromise. Let me help you. In today's world, children are being born, and the parents are saying, you decide what you are. Look between their legs, and you'll find out what they are. These are intelligent people. Why? Because they are in unbelief. They have no truth in them. They are devoid of truth. They have made their minds their God. It's called humanism. I don't need God. So what happens? Disunity comes in that extended family because others may believe they are totally off their rocker, which of course we know they are. That gives way to a whole kind of other stuff. 
But today we want to focus on the word for the unity of the church. I endeavor not to dispute about the word. If they tell me Jesus isn't real, then they'll get a dispute. But I am not God. And therefore, if they say they saved, I have to believe they saved, and then work from there by bringing the word of truth and allowing them to grow. Are you hearing me? Let's go to a wonderful example of this. So let me remind you of the world's compromise. And we saw it during COVID. If you endorse their narrative, you're their friend. If you don't, you're the devil himself. Is that right? So they have in their hearts without Christ, they have no place for unity. Jesus said to the religious ones, he said, your father is the devil. Because they said they laid claim to a so-called spiritual heritage. We are sons of Abraham. He said, before Abraham was, I am. Totally confused. They don't know what he's talking about. Because their faith is not in him. But in the outworking of religious ritual. <coughs> Can I get an amen? It's very quiet in this house. Ephesians 4. This is one of them. But it really depicts working together. What we saw this morning, if you were just aware of it, you had different musicians on here, but they sang in harmony. They played in harmony. That's God. Watch this. Ephesians 4, verse 11. He, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. This is what I want you to get. For the equipping of the saints. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. He has five different Fivefold ministry gifts to bring one objective, edifying, coming together, edifying, building up. Look at this, the body of Christ. Till we all come, I just want to unpack this a bit, till we all come in the unity of the faith. Not all faiths. The faith. How do you know it's the faith? The Greek word is pistis. And the word pistis is speaking of believing that God is all truthful and trustworthy. It's speaking of only Christ has and is able to bring us to the Father. And finally, we align our speaking with the gospel of truth, not the opinion of man. That's the context. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. So, this does not speak to Muslims. It does not speak to Hindus. It does not speak to Buddhists. It does not speak to Christian science. And so we can go on. It is speaking of a faith, not faiths. Get this. See, when we try and embrace all faiths, we're going to land up in arguments. Over the years, my wife and I, I sure maybe this is a tough one, maybe I should say it, maybe I shouldn't, probably regret it afterwards, but anyway. Um, we would, many years ago, we would go to people's houses to minister and we'd come away and we would feel agitated with each other. 
because there's no unity in that home. And we would recognize it and say, we're not going back there. Well, what about the people? I'll pray for them. Are you with me? And I'll go on my own. So I can only argue with myself. <laughs> Are you with me? Come on, family, this happens. This happens. Unity is extremely powerful in walking with God. Look at this. The Bible says, give no place to the devil. If we're giving place, he cannot be where God is. You with me? He, he can't hang around where light is. He doesn't like light. But if he can see some darkness, that gives him place. Then he can come and slowly, he seems to have a great deal of patience because he slowly puts the drip to bring discord. Slowly. Drip, 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 drip. Let's read on here. Till we all come to the unity of faith. Now here, if anybody ever says this to you, go to the scripture. If they speak about a collection of faiths and we all, and hallelujah, well they don't all say hallelujah, we all worshiping the same God. No, you can't worship the true God. You're making noises, but he doesn't receive your worship. Because there's only one mediator, Christ Jesus. He still loves you and wants to bring you into the truth, but he doesn't receive your worship. For God seeks those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Who is truth? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Come on, family. Come on. We should never be conned by the nonsense that comes out of religion. The devil's the most ardent church attender in the world. Come on. Half the time we blame the devil. It's got nothing to do with the devil. It's the lust of our flesh. We want it our way or the highway. Hello. Come on. Come on. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, quantifying what kind of faith he is speaking about. To the perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. I tell you what, I, I read this and it's all underlined. I read it and I read it. What does the stature of Christ look like? This is what it looks like. Have you come to torment me, before, us before our time? Don't cast us out of here. Send us into the sea. That's what it looks like. He didn't have to open his mouth. Darkness knows what light looks like. And the Bible says we are of the light if we walk one with another. Amen. That we should no longer be children Toss to and fro. If only he wouldn't preach that, then I could be there too. But he is such an idiot, he will not get off that subject. That we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine. Listen carefully. By the trickery of men... In the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. That's a whole mouthful. Verse 15. But speaking the truth in love. Remember, the devil cannot 
has not, never will have the love of God in him. Never. Okay? Speaking the truth in love. Why does it say that? Because you can use the word and machine gun people. You can be so harsh with the word. Come on. If you just fire the word, this word works by faith. And faith works by agape love, benevolent love. So when I use my faith, I'm demonstrating the benevolence of my heavenly Father to the recipient of the faith where I'm directing it. Are you with me? Come on, family. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. Don't be so intent on winning an argument. By hell or high water, they will do what I say. Mind you don't land in high water and then hell. From, the, from whom the whole body joined together. Yeah. Devil hates unity. The whole body joined and knit. When you knit, it's an engrafting. How many, are there any knitters here? I don't know. This day and age, you never see women knitting. When I was growing up, every, every mother knitted. Um, and they would sit there for hours with balls of string. Um, but you couldn't just pull the garment apart, but it started as a single, right? So come here quickly, you three. It starts as one, then it gets knit by two, then it gets knit by three. Each one of these carry different giftings. Every one of them. Different gifting. Their brains don't think the same. They don't look the same. This is a woman, by the way. <laughs> Just thought I'd better help them, right? Because this weird world. She thinks she's a woman and she acts like one. Amen. But think of it now. God has installed in each one of them this. Working together. Each one of them have a gift for us. Now, if we shut that gift off, we're incomplete. Now, don't get hung up on your gift, because sometimes that becomes a danger. Be intent and intentional in seeing Christ formed in you. You saved. But you see, the full stature is not yet in us when we get saved. It's a growing process. So can you see, each one of them, if I had to sit and talk to the lady and ask her, what's your heart? What's your desire? If I ask this man, what's his desire? If I ask this man, they'll all be different. The common thread is that they are born of the Spirit, and that's what they must focus on. God bless you. Thank you. Same Spirit in each one of them. But when they speak, they will speak completely different. Yeah. Diversity of gifting. That's why he made apostle, prophet, teacher, pastor, evangelist. For the equipping of the saints. Amen. 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 Glory to God. So, from whom the whole body is joined and knit together by what every joint supplies. Can I encourage you in 2023? Bring your portion. Whatever that looks like. If you don't know, find out. 
Go to the word here and say, what is my portion, Lord, that I am to bring to the local church, i.e., if this is your home base, inside church? You with me? Because it goes from here further out. By what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth to the body. You don't perform, oh, sorry Lord, you don't do the work that you're anointed to do in this body. You may be busy in other bodies, because there's a lot of busy bodies in the church, and I'm not saying that's wrong, but your primary objective is where you get fed. That's where God raises you up. Now, this is going to make some people mad, others glad, and a lot just sad. Right? But you need to hear the truth. The truth sets you free. Amen. Amen. Causes edifying for the edifying of itself in love. We do not consult with the world for our happiness, for our well-being, for our financial prosperity, for our wives, our husbands, our children. We do not consult with the world. We consult with the Word of God we allow the Holy Ghost to teach us. If you want to know how to live a good marriage, read the Bible. Don't go and get a psychologist or due respect to them. I know I've said a lot of psychologists, they've come through here and left. Because <laughs> i got the greatest psychologist in me. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost counsel. I lie on my bed and he counsels. I sit in my chair and he counsels from the highest sovereign authority, heaven. Does the Bible not say, as it is in heaven, so let it be on earth? Come on, family. Come on. Come on. If we just do that wonderful prayer that Jesus gave us as a point to be able to quote it and not live it, Come on, family. Are you with me? Yeah. How much more can you take? So what is this about? They have a common objective, those three officers. They are not in competition. When Lloyd ministers, there is definitely a teaching anointing on his life. I do not compete with Lloyd. There is, I cannot compete with Lloyd because I'll fall foul of the Lord. Come on. If I want to compete with Lloyd, I have to learn his step. That's how he ministers. Sorry, brother. You don't have to change it. It's your signature. <laughs> Come on. Come on, family. So what are those ministry offices for? To build us. If they're not building, there's either something wrong with you or them. Don't go to anybody else. Because as soon as you do, you're getting into disunity. You take it to God. You say, I don't know. He says he's a prophet, but my God, I don't know what he's talking about. Right? You take it back to the Father. Because the whole purpose of those gifts is to bring them, bring persons, us, to completeness. What does completeness look like? in the body of Christ. Well, it's the applications of truth causing us 
to grow spiritually. When you grow spiritually, you grow in wisdom. You grow in understanding. You grow in discernment, discretion. You grow out of anxiety. You grow into faith. You become more and more productive. I came out of prayer yesterday, and I'm not going to tell you what I said, but I shared stuff with my wife. I said, you know what, Blonde? It is so amazing. There is no ways I was even busy. I was actually in Psalms, and God just opened a whole component of the future like that. Started to speak to me from Psalms. Why? Because if I draw near to him, he doesn't want me, according to his word, to be at a disadvantage. We think when we go to God, I'm at a disadvantage. I didn't pray enough this week. He's not sitting with the scoreboard. The only thing that happens if you don't pray enough, he can't talk enough. Yes, it's quiet in this house. Right? He doesn't talk for the sake of talking. But he certainly will talk to bring us into the fullness of what we should be working with. So, Christ is our model. As I come to a close. Christ is our model of service and humility. If ever you think you're humble, you're not. <laughs> Must well settle that one right now. If you say to yourself, boy, I'm really getting humble. <laughs> you are not humble. You're actually full of pride. Don't try and look humble. Because true humility is absolute unwavering obedience. Watch Jesus. He humbled himself and became obedient to death. Did he not? He humbled himself and became obedient to death. Death of self. That was the demonstration. Now we know that why the cross, but I want you just to see something. You see, in his desire to keep the unity in heaven, he did what the Father asked him to do. Do you and will you do what the Father asks you to do in this house or in the extended body of Christ? I'm not talking about your ministry. I love to see, see people step up into their ministry. But sometimes the ministry takes precedence over relationship with Jesus. And that freaks me out. Because you have no ministry outside of Jesus. If he's not king and Lord, we, don't ha we have a measure, but we don't have the measure. Remember, he's talking about the fullness. Well, we're going to get there, so let me move on. But what we see here with Jesus, who's our model of humility and service, he's working throughout his ministry on the earth to bring the will of God into existence. That's what he's doing. When we are on earth here, now, that's what we are to do, is to bring and demonstrate the will of the Father in wherever we find ourselves. And then what happens when that happens through the Word, He submits to the Word, and through the Word, then what happens is we, beco we become and walk as Jesus did, in the purpose and power of the Holy Spirit. Now, John 16, 13 is very clear on that. Very clear. That he will not speak, the Spirit of God will not speak, but that which he has heard in heaven. Think about that. What is he doing? He's bringing unity. Whatever the Father says, 
He's always in harmony with his word. Did you get that? Are you and I in harmony with his word? Or are we disputing his word? The Bible says we're to grow into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. To the measure, I just love this, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. What does that look like? You want vision? Wow. This is vision. Let me read that again. The unity of the faith and the knowledge, not being born again, the mysteries of the salvation which are available to us, the fullness of our salvation. Look at this. And the knowledge of the Son of God. And the Bible says we come into a perfect man. What does that perfect man look like? Do you know the Bible says, be perfect even as God is perfect. So it is possible. So if the enemy can keep us in a place of division, we cannot go to these places. And these places are to bring glory to God and to set captives free. That's the purpose. Ultimately, that is the purpose. So, let me remind us. Christian unity is not a bunch of religious faiths gathering. In agreement for social cohesion. Putting on a front, basically. Forming a front. No. The Bible in John 14, 6, rejects this categorically. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no man comes to the Father but by me. So what we need to see as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are not going to allow the enemy to bring in the men's doctrines. We're not going to allow denomination doctrines. Come on. Because they're real. You have to fight. Again, even as a church here, we have to make sure we stay with the word and don't have the inside church doctrine. We have the word. Spirit moved, word based. Amen. Amen. Are you getting this? <clears throat> Unity. 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 Anything else dilutes the redemptive revelation and power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anything else. If I compromise with people, sometimes it's hard in counseling sessions because I can see their eyes change. In frustration as I go, well, let's go to the Word. There he goes again. Because I don't have an opinion. My opinion aligns what has God said. What does God say? What does God say? So anything else dilutes the redemptive resurrection and life. Uh, and the power of Christ in us. Let me give you a little truth here. We live in a world where the, they vuvuzela constantly about democracy. Well, let me help you in case you don't know. The kingdom of God is not a democracy. The kingdom of God does not run on votes. We build buildings on votes. Not truth. We do not vote in this church on truth. It is an absolute. If it's in the word, 
God said it, I receive it, and believe it, and that settles it. There's no dispute there. See, what we need to understand is truth is theocratic. It's not open for debate. Truth is not open. Godly truth is not open for debate. Because the person who thinks they are male when they are female thinks they are in truth. They say they're in truth. You just haven't been enlightened. So you don't understand what I'm going through. Come on. What is theocratic? It's God's government system that rules according to his name and is non-negotiable. So his love, how is that tempered? Oh, that sounds like really serious. That's those that don't walk in love, don't under, those that don't walk in faith, don't understand the love of God. That faith brings to us the authority over the devil. We're not under control. We're willingly and obediently submitting to the purposes of God which produce the fullness of truth for us. Amen. I'll close with this. God is love. His love is poured into our heart, which is our comfort, compass to walk in harmony with one another. It doesn't mean you're going to like their smile. It doesn't mean you're going to like that ugly shirt they keep wearing. <laughs> it doesn't mean you don't like the hairstyle or you like the hairstyle. That's not your prerogative. Your prerogative and my prerogative is to walk in love and allow the love of God to work on their lives by speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and the Word of God, allowing the Word to bring forth the fullness. And I close with Matthew, a scripture you must have learned. Well, I don't know if they teach it anymore, but when I was at school, they did. Matthew 6.10. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How is it in heaven? Absolute harmony. Well, that's not realistic here. That's your persuasion, but you can change. The more, you know, my kids grew up, and I would say to them, I will not have discord in my house. Now, that's quite a statement from a father. You probably think, I, well, I'm glad I didn't live in his house. Well, I have enough discord in the world. I don't want discord in my house. If we can't say anything decent to one another, don't say it. Now, we're not infallible. We did that, and then you'd have to repent. Are you with me? But I don't want to come to my castle at night. My place of rest, when I lay my head on my bed, and I think about the goodness of God. That's why the Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Because how you sleep is how you wake. That's for somebody. You wonder why this agitation and this thing won't change in your home. As you sleep, you wake up with the same one. So if you forgive, work on your heart. Might, you might have to say 444 times in the next year, God, forgive me. I'm still doing it. He's listening to your heart saying, forgive me. That releases him to work on our behalf. Amen. Amen. So it doesn't matter what the world says. It doesn't matter how the world thinks. How does God think? What does God think? Is this okay by you, Lord? He's your father. Amen? He knows better than you and I. How many of you know as parents when your kids were growing up? At 18, they knew everything. They could instruct you how life should be. 
God bless you. Word. So much in it. Thank you, Pastor Greg, so much. Guys, this, the YouTube um, is up and running again, so you can watch today's sermon on YouTube. Uh, it will be available directly after service today, so I encourage you to do that. And then when in community starts up, get back to in communities next week, not this week, next week, get involved in community. We just go over this word over and over again. Amen. Oh, yes. So Pastor Jerry and Michelle Josoma will be with us this evening. Pastor Jerry will be ministering. So um, please make your way here. It's our first evening service of 2023. <laughs> um, it's going to be really, really there, full of fun, full of truth. Pastor Jerry is amazing. He, like, he brings truth, but he's so funny. We call it what? The Dennis the Menace anointing. <laughs> Um, so if you haven't um, been under Pastor Jerry's ministry, come tonight. If you have been under Pastor Jerry's ministry, come tonight. It's going to be a really, really cool, cool way to kick off the evening services. Cool, we're going to take up the offering. I'm going to read from Genesis chapter 22, verse 9 to 14. It says, When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold him, and behold, this doesn't sound right, and behold, the man said, Behold him was a ram. Anyway, I think it's my typer. Behold, by him was a ram, caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide, as it is to this day. On the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. So if you read that scripture in your book, in your, book, in your Bible, you'll see like a little letter and a footnote. It'll take you to the bottom of your page and where it says the Lord will provide. It gives the name Jehovah Jireh. If you know anything about the Lord and about these names, we will know that Jehovah Jireh means the Lord provides, right? Does everyone know it as the Lord provides? The full version of Jehovah Jireh is actually the Lord who sees and provides. And so it's quite interesting in this story because Abraham's busy about to offer, offer up his son Isaac on the altar, and God was watching him the whole time. It's not like he was caught by surprise. The angel nudged him like, Lord, Lord, he's about to offer his son. Do something quickly. He's like, oh, oh, oh. let me put a ram. He watched him. He saw him. He's the Lord who sees. And then he provided. But very interesting in verse 11, God needed Abraham's attention. So he sends an angel to call to him. He says, Abraham, Abraham. He's like, here I am. And it says, verse 13, and Abraham lifted up his eyes. And he began to look at the one who was looking at him. And in that moment, he saw the provision of the Lord. And so there's a lesson here for us because in a time of need, we focus all our need, all our, all our attention, all our vision on that need. We're looking down at the altar of sacrifice. We're looking down at the altar of need. And God's saying, look up at the one who's looking at you. Look up at the provider. Look up at the healer. Look up at the restorer. And put your faith in me. Take your gaze off of the need and put it on me. Look up at the one who's looking at you. He's the Lord who sees and provides. He knows your need this morning. He doesn't sit, like, he doesn't sit in heaven unaware of your need. He is not unaware of your healing. He knows. He's the Lord who sees. But he encourages us. Stop looking at the need. Lift up your eyes. And look at me and see the provision of the Lord. Amen. All right. We're going to take up the offering. Thank you for watching. Join us again next week to stay in touch with all that God is doing at Inside Church.